Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, so today we're going to talk about graphing functions. Yes, we're going to expand on that today. So in math and life, we talked about the fact there are many relationships. There's relationships between people. There are relationships between candy bars and their price, or I think we use gumballs and their price. There's a relationship between an X and a Y in an ordered pair. And there's a relationship between a question and an answer. Now, we all also talked about the different kinds of questions there are. They're open-ended, yes, no, multiple response, single answer response. And the single answer response is what we're focusing on in this chapter because those are the ones that are functions. So we have a function rule, and it's an equation that describes the relationship between inputs, the independent variables, and outputs, the dependent variables. Here's the example of a function rule. Notice, it's just an equation that describes a relationship between the inputs, which are the x variables, and the outputs, which are the y variables. So if I tell you that x equals 4, I put it into the equation. Notice, it's the input. It's what I put into the equation. Then I solve it, and I find out that y equals 6, and that's the answer I get out of the equation. That is my output. It's also known as my range. So I have inputs and I have outputs. Notice, I like to think of this as the question. What's the answer to the equation when x equals 4? Answer, 6. And each question that can have only one answer is known as a function. Notice I didn't say, what's the answer when x equals 4? I didn't say the answer is 6 and 8. There is only one and only one answer. 6, and that makes it a function. So here's a function rule. There's a relationship between the x and the y, and we can get ordered pairs. So we've created tables before, and we pick an x to put into the equation. That's our input. And I also like to think of it as the question I'm going to ask. What is the value of y if x equals 0? That's the question. So if I plug in 0, negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. Answer, 4. There's only one answer. That makes it a function. I can ask the next question. What's the value of y when x equals 1? And I get the answer, 2. Notice again, one answer. I didn't tell you the answer was 2 and negative 2. And when I plug in 2, I get 0. <clears throat> now I can represent this relationship with a set of ordered pairs. I have 0, 4, 1, 2, and 2, 0. Input, output, input, output. Could we graph these points? Sure, we can make a picture. So the function rule can get us to ordered pairs, which can also get us to a graph. Notice here are the points. And this would be known as a linear function because it makes a straight line. All right, so solving functions. If I give you an equation and I ask you to solve for it, I just want you to substitute in the numbers and get the answer. Better yet, let me say it better. I want you to substitute in the inputs and get me an output. Therefore, my outputs for these two inputs are 11 and negative 3. So can we graph them? Sure, we've done it before. We just pick an input and put it to the equation and get an output. Once we get all our x's and y's, our inputs and outputs, we can graph them. If they line up like this, they're known as a linear function. Because notice, each input has one and only one output. Is it a function? Yes. Now this little floating line here, we'll discuss later. I'll let you guys do this one. Okay, I'm back. Is it a function? Well, each input had only one output. 
Therefore, yes. Okay, so we had some word problems, and we can definitely use these words to help us create our function. The number of pounds of carbon is 20 times the number of gallons of gasoline. So pounds of carbon for P is means equals 20 times the gallons of gasoline for G. I could graph that. Now, if I don't use any gallons of gasoline, obviously I've produced no pounds of carbon. But if I use one gallon of gasoline, 20 times one is 20. And if I use two gallons of gasoline, well, 20 times two is 40. And I can graph that relationship. If we change the numbers, it just changes the steepness of the line. So here's what we wanted you to know. There are lots of different ways to represent a function. One, with words. So if I tell you an output is two more than an input, it can be represented as an equation. The output is y. Is means equals two more than the input. The input plus two. Once I have the equation, I could create a table. I could pick an input and I get an output. Pick an input, get an output. And then I could graph that relationship. I could even use a mapping diagram. Remember that from last lesson? Notice 1 is, is to 3, 2 is to 4, 3 is to 5, and 4 is to 6. All right, well, that's it for this lesson. Um, I hope you guys uh, are understanding a little bit better. If you got any questions, please feel free to let me know. Thanks, guys.